Hello. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use R for exploratory data analysis as well as introduce you to R for the first time. This video tutorial it corresponds with the first problem solving session in Math 107, and there are some materials on Moodle that you can follow along with because of that. So if we scroll down to the week of April 12th, then you'll see that I have a PDF here for the problem solving session which will outline what I'm going through now as well as have some additional exercises there. And You can also find the CDC data that we're going to be talking about in this tutorial. So a good thing to do now would be to download that CDC data to a logical place on your computer. After having completed that, what we'll want to do is open R and I recommend using RStudio, but I'll show you what both versions of R look like. So first, let's look at a basic version of R. And on a Mac, it looks like this. So what you'll see is this opening screen that tells you what version of R that you're working with, and that's it. If you're on Windows, it'll open up in the entire screen rather than just a portion of your screen. And now what I recommend doing once you first start is to open up a new R script which is really just a text editor. So in Mac you can just click on this blank sheet of paper and it'll open up a new R script and here you can type in all of the commands that you're using so that you don't lose them upon shutting down R. You can also go to file and new document to create a new R script. So I'll shut that down and then open up R Studio. Whenever you close down R, it'll ask you if you want to save your workspace image for us. That's not necessary. So I'll click on Don't Save. So let's open up R Studio, which you can install again for free on your personal computer. And this is what your R Studio session will look like the first time. Uh, it'll again tell you what version of R you're using, but it'll have some extra panes here. So this is this uh, part is called the console, and this is where you actually enter in all of the commands that you're going to use in R. In the upper right hand corner you have your workspace environment which tells you what objects you've saved in R as well as what data sets you have loaded. And then down in the lower right corner you'll see all your plots showing up there and you can also uh, get help from R. There are help tabs there that you can go search for commands in. So again I recommend opening up a text editor so you can click on this plus button in the top left corner and then select R script and this will open up just a text pad. So this is where we can type in all our commands as we go. Now another useful thing that we'll use this term is the Mosaic R package and if you've never installed the Mosaic package before you will have to do that so in the console down in the lower left type install dot packages and in quotation marks type mosaic. If you hit enter it will download this package from uh, the central repository for R that RStudio runs and then everything will be done. If you're not using RStudio, for instance if you can't get RStudio working in the computer labs on campus then you would have to select a mirror and I recommend selecting zero which is the cloud mirror run by RStudio. Having done that we can go back up to our text pad which are things that we'll want to run again and we can type library mosaic which is how you actually load in this mosaic package. Now what you can do is when your cursor's on that line click run here and it will feed in that command to the console. Now what you'll see is that there are some messages down here in the console when you load the mosaic package and you can ignore those for now. It's just telling you what other packages are required and if there are any things that might be a little funny but for us that doesn't matter. Now at any time it might be wise to save your text editor here and if you, in order to do that you can just go find a logical location for this so this I'll just call it lab1.r because it's an R script so the file extension is .r. 
Now the next thing that we'll want to do after having loaded the mosaic package is to read in a data set. So if you've read in that CDC data set or downloaded the CDC data set from mosaic, you're ready to go. And we'll assign a new object called CDC to uh, in, for the name of our data set. And we'll use the read.csv function uh, to read in this data set. And if you type in file.choose and open parentheses there and run this, it'll open up a pop-up window that we can go search for our data file in. Now I've saved mine to my lab folder uh, in my file tree here, but I can just click open and now nothing will happen. If nothing happens, it doesn't mean that you have failed at anything or done anything wrong. What it actually means is that everything went well. And you'll notice that CDC uh, that data set now appears in this data, this, this top right workspace under the data, and you can look at it by just clicking on CDC here and it'll open up a spreadsheet so that you're, you can display your data. Now, that's a good first step. We've been able to load in our data and view it in R. I'll close that down and now let's learn a little bit more about our CDC data. What we can do is we can figure out how many rows it has by using the nrow cdc um, command and what you can do if you don't want to click run here every time is that if you're on Macintosh you can use command return to run this line or if you're on Windows you can use control return and that's what I'm going to do now and you just saw on my console that there are 2,000 rows and we'll figure out how many columns there are running that again we see that there are nine columns another good first step is to figure out the names of your data set. And what we see is that we have nine columns in our data set and we see the corresponding names. Now our R script here is getting a little longer and we may want to label each step of the way so we can insert comments using the hashtag. So what I can do here is do uh, the number sign and then say oh, well I'm going to load the mosaic package Next, I'm reading in the cdc.csv file, and then I'm initial. I'm, I'm uh, exploring the data next, just to give you an idea about what's going on. You can insert comments into your script at any time. Now, we might also just want to get a brief snapshot of our data set, and we can use the command head in order to see the first six rows of our data set and tail to look at the last six rows. If you want more than six rows you can insert an extra option in those functions. Let's say you wanted to look at the first ten rows then you just put, or last ten rows, then you can put ten in there. Okay so we have an initial uh, idea about what our data look like but we don't have a good idea about what the variables look like. So a good idea is to get an initial idea about each variable using numeric summaries. So initial numeric summaries would be my tag here and if you just type in summary and type CDC what it's going to do is give you an initial summary of all nine variables. When we do that we see that general health would be categorical and we have labels here. Uh, we can see X or any of which denotes whether or not someone has exercised. Well that's a 0, 1 variable so R thinks it's numeric even though it's categorical. And what you'll see is that you get different displays depending on if R thinks the variable is categorical or quantitative. Now you can also get targeted summaries for each column. So you could use this summary function again and pull off the weight column using this dollar sign notation. So CDC dollar sign weight tells R to go pull off the weight column from the CDC data set. And running that, you'll see that we can get a summary. Additionally, there's some nicer notation perhaps or syntax found in the mosaic package on using the command favstats, which gives us very similar notation but we use tilde to denote the column that we want to pull off, so tilde weight, and then we'll specify our data our, is the CDC data set. And you'll see that we get a very similar, um, similar result. We also have individual um, 
commands for summary statistics. For instance, you can find the mean of the weight column. You could find the standard deviation of the weight column, or even the interquartile range of the weight column, and the median of the weight column. So now you have a idea, good idea about what numeric summaries we can obtain here and you've started to get a feeling for R. Now the rest of the lab gives you a pretty good idea about how else you can do things in R, building many many graphs and things like that, so I will not cover all of these in this video tutorial so that it doesn't go too long, but I want to show you how I would recommend exporting a graphic from R. So in order to do that let's make the first bar graph that we talk about in this uh, problem-solving session and what we're going to do is make a bar chart of respondents who have smoked at least 100 cigarettes throughout their life and we can get an initial idea about what's going on just by using the table command which will give us a frequency table of the smoke 100 variable. So you can see there are 10,559 zeros, 9,441 ones, so zero stands for no, one stands for yes, and now let's make a bar chart. And using the functionality of the mosaic package, there is a function called bar graph, and we can use tilde to identify the variable, and we of course have to give it the data set, which is CDC, and I like filling the bars in gray because they're a little more aesthetically pleasing than the blue. Now I build this plot and it'll show up down here in my plot browser or viewer and let's say I want to then export that or copy it so that I can include it in a word processor. Well what I could do is click the export tab here and then save plot as image. That allows you to resize this plot and it will re-render automatically. You can then save it uh, wherever you want on your computer. Alternatively, what you could do is just copy the plot to your clipboard. Again, you can resize it as you wish. Press copy plot and then open up something like Microsoft Word, which will take a second here, and then copy or paste that into Word. So, I'll open up a new document here, just click in here, and you can right click and paste the plot directly into Word. It's taking a little while to think, but there you go, and it's quite easy to deal with at that point uh, in Word. You can resize, put captions, and all of that. So that's all I'll talk about in this video tutorial. For more information, you can see the first problem-solving session, that PDF online on Moodle, for, and you can always come in and talk to me. Thank you.